Greetings and welcome to In-Depth. I'm D.K. Ronstadt. October 12 is World Sight Day. Author and Hummingbird Medal recipient for public service, Jennifer Daulat Orajo, is using this day to make us think about another aspect of sight. Her latest publication is an insight into living with blindness. Thank you very much for making the time, Ms. Jennifer. How are you doing? Fine, thank you, and thank you for having me. Definitely our pleasure. But many times we hear about someone who is visually impaired, somebody who is blind, they can be shunted into a corner. Somebody will say, nah, we can't do that, so do bother. But looking at what it is you do, you're, you're a hummingbird, you're a national award recipient. Who are the persons around you that would have said, no, man? You're working, you're doing this. Who, who would put, would have pushed you to be? Well, my friends and family, if you don't have the support from your friends, from your family especially, then you will find those persons not going forward. To have that support is one of the greatest benefits to encourage you to continue with life, not to make it a closure. This is the end of my life because I'm unable to see now. And I'm wondering whether or not, I, I could see that people would be getting inspiration because friends and family is one thing, but then everyone that you interact with say, but no man, how is Jennifer doing this? No man is Jennifer handling and organizing and getting that extra incentive to say to give someone else a chance, someone else who is maybe a little different or have a slightly different abilities from that person. Do you see yourself as that kind of shining example of what is, can be possible? Well, I see myself as what God has planned for me. And learning and educating oneself, we can go forward in conquering our blindness in that we can do the same things as you do by using alternative techniques. And yes, I have come a long way with the encouragement of many volunteers who assisted me in my work at the association. I worked 31 plus years at the association, doing lectures to schools, groups, and organization, and also being at the head of the department at the association. And with the encouragement, and I was trained at the Canadian National Institute for the Blind, where I learned my braille and entered university, returned to Trinidad, seek employment, went all over the place looking for work in the 80s. And I tried about 54 places before the TNT Blind Welfare Association accepted me. And having the courage, the support, as my professor said, when you gain knowledge is not to keep it is to share it and but at the same time don't share what all, all 100 percent and from this we go forward and share and learn and develop and this is how we, we can succeed and even though you talk about not sharing 100%, you're still doing some sharing in terms of this publication and insight into living with blindness. So what is the thing that really said, made you say, okay, I want to put this down so that I can share these experiences? Because sometimes you may be thinking it might be a good idea, but that good idea may never be implemented. So what makes you decide, okay, well, no, I really need to do this? Okay. Um when I gave lectures at the optometrist program at UV, doing lectures, one my the lecturer there, one of the lecturer, Petra Bridge Mohan, she encouraged me to write a book. I started to write this book before I retired at the association, but it didn't come to reality until COVID. When there wasn't much to do, I picked up the book and completed it then. And it was for me to share that information for people to 
understand that we are just as anybody else. We, we do the same things as you do using alternative techniques. This book shares, this is what the cover of the book looks like. This book tells you how you communicate with a person who is blind. How you, how is this possible that they can eat on their own? Because a simple question like that, when I do my lectures, I remember one student said to me, but Miss, how can you eat? I said, do you look, do you look in the front of the mirror when you are eating? So things that we take for granted, people don't know, right? It, it teaches you, it shows you how to seat a person. It has things, the common eye conditions in Trinidad and Tobago, uh, how it is possible for persons to be employed using assistive technology. Persons who are the teacher, there is something on the teacher in the classroom with the visually impaired. And there is one section there, powers who be, and I show where the government did certain things already for persons with disabilities and the visually impaired. And I also commented on where they can improve because we have plenty of resources in Trinidad and Tobago where we can improve to become world number one in sharing the same things for persons with disabilities. You know, we have the resources there just to be implemented and to be guided. So this book is, it came out from many lectures from schools, groups, and organizations with the association and, and interacting with my clients and also doing lectures to the geriatric program where you train young people to be geriatric nurses. I did a number of those as well. And this book is written twofold, to reach the citizens of TNT, to reach the help and professions because we might be doctors and lawyers and high professions and may not know how to communicate with a person who is blind or guide a person who is blind. When you, when you are a patient, sometimes you go to the doctor's office, they don't know how to, to, to show you to a chair or, or guide you to a, a seat in their office. So this book helps the helping professions, helps everybody. It can be served as a textbook as well because I have questions at the each each at the each, at the end of each chapter, and I'm hoping tertiary level education institutions within Trinidad and Tobago to start with would use the book as a reference book, a recommended book for further reading. And who knows, eventually adapted to one of the courses at UWE or the University of Southern Caribbean, UTT, because already UTT teaches Braille to sighted persons who are teachers and they're using one of the textbooks that I wrote in uh, Braille for sighted persons. So I'm hoping this book goes up uh, another level to reach the community out there throughout Trinidad and Tobago. And we continue the conversation when we return, we're speaking with Jennifer Dowlot Araho, a uh, person who is visually impaired, a book on a book, and insight into living with blindness. Let's also say that she is a Hummingbird Medal recipient. We continue the conversation when we return. Stay with us. DK Ronster here with you. We are speaking with Jennifer Daulat Araho, who is giving us insight to her journey living with blindness. And speaking of that, I also got a, a little birdie whispered to me in terms of coming and enjoying our journey with Pavi. And that's on Sunday, 3rd December. So hopefully we speak to Mr. Bawani Pasad before, before that. But in terms of 
getting that information and sharing that information, one I'm really glad that that lecturer suggested. Jennifer, this is something you could do, you know. Why do you put this in a book? And um, yeah. also, you taking the time to do it, but speak to me a little bit about the process of writing down and editing what technology you're using because it's more than once you say you can do the same things but just like using possibly alternative technology so what is some of that technology that goes into creating uh, uh, and dealing with a project like this okay well i use my laptop and on the laptop has the jaws program job access with speech so everything that i type it says back to me it reads back the sentences, paragraphs. I'm able to go delete, cut, paste, and um, fix, correct. When I completed this book, I went through it firstly with um, one, one volunteer and going through it with that sighted person. It was amazing to know the question that arose in in communicating with him that so many things he did not know about the blind and visually impaired. So I know that the book will reach out to persons. From there, I um, had a manager regarding the book who edited it again, see of the publication, her name is Lisa Owen, and a massive thanks to her, to her for all of the work that she did in, did in making the book become a reality to its final stage that we can launch it on World Side Day, which is the 12th of October. And one of the things I find interesting, Ms. Jennifer, is that sometimes something that may seem so obvious to one person, someone who is in a different circumstance, a different reality, they may, hey, I never thought of it that way, you know. So even like that volunteer that you were talking about and possibly other people, what are some of the things that people may miss that may seem very obvious to someone who has uh, a vision, vision impairment, somebody who is totally blind? What are some of those things that persons who are sighted may miss in terms of treating with, with uh, individuals who are visually impaired? Okay, for example, when I was going through the book, the volunteer wasn't aware that the government put marks on the raised marks on the our local currency until we reached that chapter. And when he went on the computer to verify it, he said, look, I did not even know that that was happening. You know, as persons on the street might say, who dressed you today? You cannot see <laughs> things that, you know, they would, no one dressed me, I dress myself just as somebody else. You just learn your clothing, you might learn it by the texture, the fashion, you know. Somebody said to me one time, walking down the street when I was working, hey, you, you, are, you are so pretty, but nobody would ever marry you. Not knowing my guy who was with me said, but she's already married, what are you talking about? <laughs> So, you know, these are some of the misconceptions persons have in their minds about blind persons, that we are dependent, right? We are dependent. If I were to walk into a store, you know, and I were to have my wife in, one of the first things I'm sure might, might enter a person's mind, Phew, she needs help. What does she want? Is she coming to ask for something? Not knowing we are coming to, I'm coming to purchase something to inquire. You know, they have certain beliefs. They are not aware that we could survive and be as anyone else in every day's life. And with that, and, and thank you so much for that, huh? uh, Ms. Jennifer, showing off on people. She married already. She wants to marry again. <laughs> <laughs> you understand what I mean? That's what some of some people just think, oh, because you have a disability, you, you don't have feelings. You, hey, what about when you say, you know, you are blind, you don't know the person, what the person looks like, but don't they say love is blind? 
<laughs> so if a person loves somebody who is blind, surely their 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 love has to be real, eh? <laughs> you're, drop, you're dropping jewels, Miss Miss Jennifer. But in terms of getting the book, and I know you said you want to partner with certain agencies, so and organizations so individuals can make use of the massive amount of information that is in the book. But where where can persons find it to purchase, to build their capacity? Where, where, where can we find the book? Well, I'll be going, because it's been launched on Thursday, after that I'll be going out to the bookstores. I intend to first go to UWE. And by the way, today I went up to uh, Mount St. Benedict, and um, I, I, I showed them my book, and the purchase, they asked for a dozen already. So at one store, it will be at the Mount St. Benedict um, Abbey store up there to start with. I will be going out to UWE to the other stores. I invited some of the stores to the launch. Hopefully somebody would come. The library and my other books, the library have those books on their shelves throughout Trinidad and Tobago. So I'm hoping they would purchase this one. And this is a this is a book I think I believe that persons would want to know the information and hopefully persons would want to own one of the books, not to only go to the library. So in the meantime, if they do need a, a book, the to start with, as I said, Mount St. Benedict bookstore will have it from next week and well I can leave my phone number until I get the book out there which is 663-5452 if anybody wants to know more about the book or where they can get it. All right thank you so much for that we have about two minutes more Miss Jennifer but give us an idea what the other books are about as well thank you because they can't just leave us hanging and say well I, I, we spoke about this book okay, but you have other books. Book, the Sure, the first book is called Windows to the World of the Blind. When I compiled some articles I had uh, um, published in the Newsday newspaper under um, a certain number of years. The second book was uh, the Braille Manual. The third book was the Braille Manual revised version with more information. And now we have this book here. So um, an insight into into living with blindness. So a, this is where I am at. But and yeah. for that we want to thank you very much, Jennifer Dowlat Araho, as well as Lisa Owen, everyone around who would have helped bring the lecturer who suggested that you write it. Everyone who would have brought this publication to fruition and really looking forward to availing ourselves of it and seeing how we can better work with individuals of all sorts, all communities in society so that the entire community moves forward. And on behalf of the entire TTT News team, I'm DK Roster. This has been In Depth With Me. Thank you so much for joining us.